In this video, we are asked to find the average distance from a point inside of a ball of radius A to its center. So let's start by doing a couple of things. The first thing we should do is sketch the region. So here's a ball. The equation of this is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared. That's the radius um, to the center of the ball. These are the Cartesian or rectangular coordinates of this ball. But any time that we're working now, now that we're familiar with spherical coordinates, any time we're working with a sphere or a ball, a ball is just a solid sphere, um, we might think to work in spherical coordinates, and that would be a good idea. Because the equation of this boundary, the sphere, is just rho equals a in spherical coordinates. That's the same equation here. So the equation of the sphere in rectangular is the distance formula. The equation of the sphere in spherical is just constant rho. Um, if we want to fill out the whole ball, of course, we need rho to vary from 0 out to a. So remember how this works. We always start at the origin, and when rho varies, it varies in the vertical z direction. So our rho will fill out this much, and we'll go from 0 to a. Then to fill out the rest of the ball in spherical coordinates, the next step is for the angle phi to come into play. And the angle phi, remember we've set conventions, only varies from 0 to pi. And the way that we think ab about this geometrically is that it takes this ray determined by rho, and it rotates it out of our screen toward us right now. It rotates it out and it fills out like a fan almost a fan, so this is now a two-dimensional fan, which can, which, uh, can be thought of as like a slice, a single wedge, but, but infinitely thin, of course, right? So right now that's just phi. And so phi varies in this way, always from the direction of the positive z-axis toward the positive x-axis in that xz plane. And then finally, to fill out the entire sphere, we can go our angle theta behaves just like it does in polar coordinates, which is why we've set these conventions. Theta in the xy plane uh, varies from 0 to 2 pi, and this fan then rotates around and fills out the whole sphere. Okay, so all this conversation was just to build the sphere itself. What we want to do now is measure, so we want to measure the average distance between any point that lives inside the sphere. Let's call this point Q and the distance between Q and the origin. We want to find the average distance between any point inside here and the origin. So this point Q needs to vary uh, throughout the entire sphere or ball as well. So this point Q has to vary inside the entire ball. And of course, the coordinate that we're looking for, the distance, the length, right, of this segment, that's just the rho coordinate of that point Q. And so when we do our integral, we're going to have to integrate up this rho, the distance, the distance formula, so just rho in spherical coordinates. But the other thing we need to do is remember what it means to be an average value. So let's recall from Calculus 1 that the average value of a function all right, is equal to, so say we have a function f of x that's defined and continuous, we can integrate it, all that good stuff, but it's defined on an interval from a to b. The average value of that function is the integral of the function over the interval, integral a to b f of x dx, then divided by the length of the interval. So it's 1 over b minus a times this uh, this integral of the function, and this gives you, this, the number that you get back here is the average value of the function on that interval. So we can extend this, and by the way, in Calc 1 or Calc 2, whenever you first learn about this, hopefully Calc 1, um, you, you build this formula with a Riemann sum argument by thinking about what would happen if you took finitely many points along this interval, um, and then you, you take a limit, of course, and you end up with this formula. So in Calc 3, the difference now is that the, the region that we're integrating over is not a line segment. It's an entire three-dimensional region. And so for us now, the average value of our function, our function is now a function of three variables, right? Um, so our average value is going to be the triple integral over this region, I'll call it E, of f of x, y, z. I'm writing rectangular coordinates, even though we're not going to use them, dv. This is going to be, that's the, uh, 
the integral over the entire region, and then we need to divide by the equivalent of the length, but in three dimensions the equivalent of a length is a volume. So it's one over the volume of this region times the integral. Okay, and for us, the, the function, so for us, the function is just rho equals a. So f, sorry, it's just f equals rho. So f of rho phi theta is just equal to the distance rho from the origin. So this is the function that we're going to try to find the average value of. The other piece of information that needs to be computed, right, is the volume. But because of how nice our region is, we can just use geometry. And the volume of a sphere of radius A, so if we call this region E, I'm referring to our solid region as E, the volume of a sphere of radius A, or a ball of radius A, um, for us volume of E, this is just 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed, so that'll be pi, 4 thirds pi A cubed, the radius is A of this ball. All right, and so that'll be the volume that we have to divide by. Now the integral itself, that's the part that has to be computed. Okay, so let's set it up and see how it goes. At this point, um, if you're feeling comfortable with the question at hand, pause the video, work out the computation, and then you can jump ahead and check your answer. And hopefully we get the same thing. And if not, hopefully it's me that makes a mistake, but um, hopefully nobody makes a mistake. So let's write it down then. Our average value is going to be, we've just, we've computed the volume, so let's just write it in there. This will end up being 3, if we take the reciprocal, over 4 pi a cubed times the triple integral, and I'm going to leave room for the boundaries here because this region is, is a nice rectangular region in some sense. So we're in spherical coordinates, but the bounds are all just numbers. Remember, a is, it can, we're considering a to be a fixed number here. And then we need to integrate our function, so that's just f of rho phi theta equals rho, times dv, but remember that the spherical volume element is another rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. This whole portion here at the end, this is the, just the spherical volume element, dv. And then we need to just put in our bounds. So 0 to a. Um, for the rho bounds, the phi goes from 0 to pi always. And then theta, theta is not even uh, involved here. It is involved because it's, there's an integral. But there's no thetas in the integrand. That's 0 to 2 pi. And at this point, the integral can be separated, right? So the boundaries are all rectangular. This is, you could think of this as a Fubini theorem, or it's a very special case where you can separate it. And be careful when you make your phi's that they don't look like rows, as mine did. And we, what we end up with is 3 over 4 pi a cubed. The integral f in the theta direction, 0 to 2 pi 1 d theta. The integral in the phi direction is 0 to pi sine of phi d phi. And the integral in the rho direction is 0 to a rho cubed d rho. And each one of these integrals can be done individually now. So. I'll finish it off here. We have 3 over 4 pi a cubed times, in this integral is 2 pi. This integrand is negative cosine. Um, when you evaluate it, you end up with 2. So you should check that. And then this integral is now 1 fourth a to the fourth power. Okay, and at this point, we want to cancel some stuff and simplify. If possible, you should check all these integrals that I did, by the way. Make sure, hopefully, I didn't make a mistake. And a whole lot of cancellation happens. And what we end up with is that the average distance from any point to the center of our ball here, this Q, the average distance, if, if after canceling all this stuff, what's left? We have a 3 and an A on top. And downstairs, we just have a 4. And so the, that's the average distance from any point inside of the ball, including the boundary of the ball, to the center of the ball.